we our goal uh, is to make any brand the best version of itself. A key advantage is that we can bring them into the burgeoning world of US sports betting, which obviously is many, many of them want to do right now. What's a big win for you as far as like marketing, publicity, launch, you, you know, getting these guys above some of the clutter and some of the noise and, and, and helping them position themselves in the marketplace? We'll look at everything they've done so far in terms of their releases and look at how that's going to shape what they'll do going forward everything they've done on social media so we can get an idea of the voice of the brand um holistically you have a great view behind it. yeah that's amazing that's i lucked out great. my window looks right onto the vatican wow. yeah very lucky say the um the, the sun never sets on the red North empire how's that is that a good night <laughs> can we can we steal that for data art so right thanks again for uh, joining us today uh tell us a little about yourself and about right that uh, thank you very much for having me, Russell and Kevin. A uh, big fan of the show. Um, my, my name's Ryan. And I'm a senior account director at Red Knot Communications. So we are a boutique PR and communications agency. We specialize in sports, sports betting, and eye gaming. Sort of sitting at in the intersection of sports and sports betting effectively. Uh, we have offices in London, got offices in New Jersey, in Dubai, and currently I'm in an office in Rome. So we're all around. We're all around the world. You have a great view behind you. Yeah, yeah that's amazing. That's I lucked out. Great. My window looks right onto the Vatican. Wow. Yeah, very lucky. Yeah, <laughs> great. Thank you. So yeah, just so for the audience, you know, uh, Ryan is a really good friend of ours and of Data Arts for quite some time now. Um, what What's interesting is that um, a lot of the interviews that folks have, have seen have come way of. Uh, Ryan's network and, and, and clients. And it really was interesting for us uh, because what we like to do is kind of um, cover the entire spectrum of iGaming um, and even uh, virtual sports. Um, and uh, that, that kind of uh, uh, helps us um, not only focus just on, you know, sports betting or operators, but really give folks, you know, the, the entire view of what's out there gaming in particular um so right in terms of uh red Knot, i know you guys do like a lot of cool things and you're involved with uh, some really interesting like clients and clients of pretty good initiatives that have come by way of, of, of red knots guidance but would you like to share some of those you know the ones gonna you know stick out i know all your clients are your favorites but but some of the ones that you know uh you're particularly proud of yeah, no, no favorites around here. But uh, yeah, as I say, we um we operate in sports and sports betting and eye gaming, so we have sort of different silos of clients, if you will. So I think we we help people in sports understand the opportunities that are in sports betting. Uh, we help sports betting companies find a place in the world of sport as well. So that's the kind of relationship that goes both ways. We work with betting brands, we work with operators, with data providers, and also quite a lot of work in pure sports and in sort of the areas where those converge. So for example, we're working at the moment with Major League Cricket, which is launching cricket um, in the US this summer, which is as a, a purely sports client that we have. Uh, that's a very exciting project that's coming together very nicely. And um, it's launching on uh, the first game is on July 13th. So looking forward to that very much. Um, but maybe a, uh, a client where it's the convergence of those worlds is Simwin Sports. So I believe you're very familiar with you guys. You are indeed. So um, that's a digital sports league. It's the world's first virtual sports league is Simwin Sports. So what they effectively have is digital assets. The players are all digital assets that you can own. Um, the teams owned by world famous athletes. Uh, Magic Johnson's got a team. Lemelo Ball has a team. The, the, there's countless superstar celebrities who are uh, ostensibly the team owners as well. Um, and there's DFS games. So you, what do you do is join in and, and play DFS. I think it's $1, $5, $10 games they have going on. A really, really interesting concept, basically, merging the worlds of fantasy sports and gaming. So that, that's, um, that's a really exciting one that we're working on. I've got, I've got plenty of others I could uh, talk to you about as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sure you have a deep uh, uh, bag of uh, pretty cool stuff. Yeah. You know, you know, we obviously like we love the sim win because it it's for us it was great because it was emerging technology and it seems like when we look at Red Knot, you are technology leaning in some of your your clients. You're very forward thinking. 
can you walk us through like when you onboard a client, uh, like let's say Simwin, how do you, what's your campaign look like? You know, as far as, you know, what's a big win for you as far as like marketing, publicity, launch, you, you know, getting these guys above some of the clutter and some of the noise and, and, and helping them position themselves in the marketplace. Right. So I suppose when we do onboard a client, there's a number of things we do. It depends on the kind of services we want to offer them. But essentially, we, our goal uh, is to make any brand the best version of itself and to put its best foot forward, essentially. So we want to set them up for success as much as possible with that respect. So, um, so, so for a typical client, we'll do the, the pure PR thing, which is getting earned media in the sports betting and sports business press. Um, we've got excellent relationships with uh, journalists within the industry. And that's how that's one of our key advantages, obviously, is, that, is our reach within the industry. Uh, we'll do strategic planning, looking out at the next six months to a year for a client that how their messaging is going to look and how it's going to evolve. A big thing we'll do um, when when we uh, when we onboard a client, Kevin, is is a is a communications audit, a comms audit. So we'll look at everything they've done so far in terms of their releases and look at how that's going to shape what they'll do going forward. Everything they've done on social media, so we can get an idea of the voice of the brand um, holistically, if you will. And we can see if there's any inconsistencies there, make recommendations there. And once again, like make sure that a brand puts its best foot forward uh, when, when, uh, when we're on board with them, basically. So it's, it, it is interesting you picked up on the technology side of things, I think, as well, Kevin, because we, we're a remote um, um, firm. We've got a headquarters in London. We've got headquarters in New Jersey. But many of us work remotely. I am currently as well. So I think that, that has many advantages. But it it lends itself to a technological approach, I think, as well. And that is reflected in a lot of our clients. And a lot of them, even in a lot of the sports side of things we do, we tend to work with what I'd call in, in the sporting realm as challenger brands. So uh, we launched Major League Pickleball, for example. So nice. that, yeah, that's, that's, that's gone tremendously well, obviously. Major League Cricket, which, who I mentioned earlier, that's a challenger brand, the second biggest sport in the world, but it's challenger brand in the yeah. US, of course. So that's that's the kind of angle we like to take with things as well. So yeah, it's 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 really interesting work, and it's it's very varied as well. And I I I love it. <laughs> now now, will you broker deals for the pickleball uh, association for betting? Will will you know? And I and I may have missed this because you know I, I've been playing a little bit of pickleball. But is there? Will we be having sports betting in pickleball, or is there already? Do you know of? Uh, but that's not actually a client I personally look after. But I mean, that is a service we definitely do. So, for example, if the cricket side of things wanted to expand into sports betting, we've got a huge um, wealth of experience in sports betting and in the industry. Um, our, our founder, Andy Clarkson, I actually got into Red Knot because I worked for him pretty much straight out of college in a, in a sports betting capacity. And yeah. he sold his business to William Hill. He worked with Fox, uh, Fox Bet and Fox Sports in the US as well. So um, we've got huge contacts coming from the top down basically within Red Knot and our partner group as well. So yeah, there's there, it, it, essentially if a sports client will come to us, a key advantage is that we can bring them into the burgeoning world of US sports betting, which obviously is man, many of them want to do right now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that, that's interesting. Uh, um, yeah, I, I also like the fact that you, you kind of uh, deal with uh especially in, in the sports area uh with uh kind of these like new entrants right into uh sports leagues uh specifically in the in the united states um and yeah i mean pickleball uh, I mean, definitely is like one of the one of the if not the hottest sport right now i mean I, I live here in new york city and you read about you know uh you know fights that uh you know residents are having with the parks about Re redoing areas of the city to pickleball courts. Um, so it is definitely taking off and, um, you know, even, you know, I see that TV contracts. I mean, there are they show pickleball yeah. on, uh, it was on this, it was on this weekend. My family yeah. was glued to the women pickleball. That's yeah. Great. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, pick, pickleball is definitely taking over in the US. Um, I spent the last 10 years before I came to Italy in Charlotte, North Carolina. It's where I'm heading back to actually very soon as well and I, I see in the news every week it seems like a new pickleball bar has opened up where you can get some chicken wings after you play pickleball even like parking lots now seem to be taking over by a pickleball course and i don't know where the people are parking now but there's definitely more pickleball <laughs> happening <laughs> <laughs> no, 
they're, they're walking to pickleball. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. And, um, in, in terms of, um, you know, kind of what, what you see ahead, uh, for, uh, the industry, or the industries are going around like, you know, sports betting, sports, uh, e even like eye gaming, um, what, what do you see kind of unfolding over the next few years? Because, you know, with sports betting, you know, this year has been kind of slow in terms of new markets going online. Um, I think there were just, I don't know, a, a couple to this point who are hmm. recording here, you know, end of June. Um, but what do you see kind of evolving, uh, at least in, in the United States? Well, um, Rendon actually started in 2020. Um, I came on in 2021, but the initial focus was for Asian markets. But obviously, it became quite apparent that the US is the place to focus. And I think there's still tremendous potential in the US. I mean, just last week, as we record, uh, North Carolina legalized sports betting, which is where I'm heading to. So that's a, there's a huge opportunity there. Uh, we've got a couple of staff in North Carolina as well, in, in addition to a few more on the East Coast in New Jersey. But I think very much the focus for Red Knot remains the United States, remains the, the opening up of new states, and remains the opportunity there. And I think one of our one of our niches, if you will, is that entrance we have with um, with sports, with pure sports and with sports leagues. We, we have conversations with sports federations, with challenger sports. We have conversations with teams themselves. We represent a few teams. Uh, we actually have a team in the USL, the United Soccer League, which is the league below Major League Soccer. Uh, Orange County Soccer Club, who we represent as well. We have done for uh, a longstanding relationship with them. And that's the kind of relationship we're looking to forge at the moment. And we are continuing to forge at the moment. The the US being very much our focus. And it's a, a primary reason why I'm leaving. I'm, I'm, I'm in Italy right now, but I'm coming back over to the States to help help with the uh, US office because that is that is very much where the focus is. And despite what slowdown there might may have been, still very much a tremendous opportunity in the States for us. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, I mean, at least from my perspective, uh, you know, what, once the bigger states come online, things will pop significantly, right? right? Well, once we can get, you know, Texas and, you know, at some point, maybe California and maybe, you know, Florida will come back on. <laughs> yeah. This short lived, yeah. Well, uh, sports betting, uh, you know, legalization that they had. Um, what I'm, I know you so you mentioned you focus on the US and you know that's kind of you know you know data arts uh, or at least Kevin and I's focus are on the US as well even though you know we're a global company we have sports betting clients all over the world uh but uh, some of the markets that you know that we haven't kind of dug into is like uh you know Latin America and Canada do you have any, any thoughts on, on on those markets yeah, I mean, we do have people in Toronto. We've got um, a, a few can, uh, clients who have opened uh, open for sports betting in Canada as well, and a few who are operating in 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 LATAM. Um, for example, um, Atlas that we've been working with, who very much focusing on LATAM at the moment. And quite a few of our clients, past and present, um, our opening offices are there, having head offices set up in Colombia and whatnot. So that uh, there's obviously a, a big strategic focus down there. And I should say, we do actually have people in Buenos Aires as well. So we're very much a global outfit, and we we can um, we're, we're excited by all the opportunities in, in in every continent essentially, and that's not to ignore the the continent of Red North's birth as well in Europe because we still do a lot of work there. As I mentioned, head head offices in in London, and a lot of um, uh, of our clients are based out of London and of out of Ireland as well. Uh, Voxbet, for example, which you, who you guys had on recently. Uh, mm -hmm. who are Irish based uh, voice to voice to bet technology, which is a really, really interesting technology, which is very forward facing, very um like like Siri for for your um for your for your besting operator essentially. So very exciting stuff they've got going there. Uh we we work with the first group um Stronach um for, for, for horse racing as well. We do lots of work with them. So th there's plenty uh, a very, very clients that we have in different continents. So we work a lot across a lot of time zones. I'll say that much. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like you got, you got coverage and all the time. So then we work in a similar way too. Yeah. Um, because we're, we're kind of dispersed, uh, globally. Yeah. Excellent. We say the, um, the, the sun never sets on the Red Knot Empire. How's that? Is that a good night? <laughs> yeah, can we, That's can we steal time. that for data art? You know, with, uh, I, I, cause I think, I think with 30 offices around the globe, uh, wow. you know, I think there's some people that in our, in our media practice that literally never sleep. 
Okay. Uh, well, we, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about the messaging. How about that? Then we can. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're, you're <laughs> I'm always on. Always on. Yeah, you know, we we actually just had, and yeah, yeah, and I don't know if we talked about this, if you guys talked about this earlier, but you know, I'm just going to throw this in there because I think it is in every conversation right now. Yeah, and and we just had a big conversation in our group about AI, how we use it, um, in the PR world and in your world, that with your crew, how are you approaching it? It's because it's easy. You can use it in campaigns. Uh, have you guys? huddled on that and how do you use you know chat gbt in in a marketing campaign or do you just stay away from it yeah we we have started to use it i think there's um there's a reflex to be terrified by the incoming exactly. um, yeah. <laughs> um uh, ai revolution i think we've we've certainly been embracing it quite a lot of what we do kevin is um is social productions for a lot of our um um a lot of our clients will, will look after their social channels and strategize for them and advise on the content that they do in addition to purely managing them as well so there has been some ai elements there which we can use use to help um help increase engagement for our clients um we actually just i think on our linkedin just um, our social manager just put up um, a post about how to use ai the, the benefits of doing it so i recommend you go check that out on the red knot linkedin feed uh if you haven't seen it already but that it it's um you, you can't be ignored i think is the way basically right. is their attitude to it and we are embracing it and even some of our clients are as well. The aforementioned Simwin Sports in their in their uh, algorithm, it's AI driven. The technology they're right. using is AI right. driven, so they're very right. very excited that that um, that that has come to the fore in the technology space as well, because it's very much how um, how their game operates too. So it's it's um, yeah, it's it's as I say, the temptation is to be worried that it's coming for all of us, but I think we're certainly at this point we're embracing it and we we've, we've started using it. Um, certainly from um, a social production perspective. Yeah. yeah. And uh, in terms of um, um, AI, uh, you know, to kind of continue the conversation here, um, yeah, like, like Box, Bet, um, you know, so, so, uh, I think Angstrom, uh, they also might dabble in that a little bit as well. Um, and, and one of the things that we've been discussing and, uh, writing by recently is, you know, personalization and, you know, the AI piece is a big part of kind of providing that personalization to really any app, right? Not, not only sports betting apps, but iGaming or even something like, like Simwin Sports. Um, like, uh, it, what, what are your thoughts on kind of, uh, well, let's just talk about operators in terms of their appetite to allow for more personalization within their um, apps or, or, or website. So, you know, as a, as a just kind of set a table, like today, if I open up my FanDuel app, I, I just have to consume what they feed me, right? It's not, it's not like uh, they care about the fact that I bet on one sport more than the other. They'll still kind of, you know, push whatever information that they feel uh, or they just, yeah, push whatever information they want, you know, to me without me having any type of, you know, option to not see something again. Yeah, I would expect more personalization is something that's going to be coming more prominent, um, Russell, I'd imagine. I mean, I, you're, you're quite right. A lot of the personalization that's done on um, an operator site will be by geographic location. So if you go to a UK site, obviously it's going to push soccer more to you. You're on better GM is going to go more for uh, American football and whatnot. And I think, um, I mean, that's, I suppose that's kind of an application that could AI could be used for. And, and even pulling back from AI a little bit, you know, when you go to like, when there's a help bot, what can I do for you today? They've, instead of having a phone line, you can help on any website. That's effectively a very primitive AI, isn't it? So that yeah. we're, we're just going to move on and on and on from that kind of technology, I think. And it will depend. I, I'm not sure of the legal legality of cookies and data storage in terms of how much operators can um, um, personalize from region to region. But I, I would imagine that's something that's going to be more prominent going forward. And with technology like Voxbet have, for example, um, the learning capability that it will have, I think is going to be pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and you know, we, we were also like discussing about, um, you know, why, you know, you have like all of these, you know, I guess personalization options, you know, with Facebook, with, with Spotify, um, but yet, you know, with, with all of these 
you know, sports betting apps, it's uh, limited to to none. I think the only thing that I can personalize is pick my favorite sports, and that's it. <laughs> uh, right. Yeah, uh, yeah. My, my screen is the screen that they give me, and I can't move things around. But yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. It is, yeah. So, in, in terms of other improvements to sports betting apps, um, uh, so, something that yeah, has been at least you know kind of a issue for for me personally is, is kind of the lag and the video feed. Mm. Um, do you see like any innovation around that to kind of reduce the, the lag there or? Any thoughts around that? Yeah, I mean, latency in video is top of mind for a lot of operators, I imagine, and what it is, and it will be going forward. But I mean, I, I think I think a lot of that will be solved by just better connections in general. Um, I think yeah. uh, as as video latency in general gets better on mobile devices, and I think the, the push we're going to see uh, more broadly is obviously towards more mobile um, um, faith, facing options as well. And honestly, I think in terms of technological pushes, like voice bettings, uh, which we, we mentioned with Voxbet previously, that feels very much like it's going to be inevitable. Um, you know, like you'd ask your um, Google or Apple-based device for, for things. I think you're going to be doing the same thing with, with, with the bookmakers as well. Uh, that, that feels pretty near on um, in, the, in the future, I would say. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because, uh, you know, one of the kind of, Odd things like if you're actually watching uh, a video stream, like on the sports betting app, you'll see the score change like I don't know, 15, 30 seconds before the video actually plays out. So, yeah, well, that, that, that's something that, from a from user experience perspective, is really, you know, yeah. Not, and I think as, as the US market goes more into in play markets as well, that's going to become more, more prominent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. I think, uh, Kevin, any final thoughts? No, I, I think I, I, I'm most curious about the launch of cricket, uh, okay. and, and, you know, and watching your campaign roll out. You know, can you get can you shed some light, light as we go on what we should expect for cricket and and maybe some innovative campaigns or what you guys are doing to help them launch the the league? Yeah, sure. So uh, basically, there are six teams who are coming to Major League Cricket in various cities. The one we're specifically looking after is in San Francisco, the San Francisco Unicorns. I learned some jargon, by the way. A unicorn, apparently, in Silicon Valley is a, um, a startup that's valued at over $1 billion, I believe. A, a unicorn right. is the name. Sure. So um, the, the owners of this team are both Silicon Valley uh, a VC owners and investors. So um, it, it's, it's, uh, it, it's, it's really exciting. It's really catching on. And what I've been really pleased with is how much interest there's been in the not just in the general sports media about the start of cricket or the the start of major league cricket in the states, but also in, in the business press as well. So we've been organising interviews with the likes of Forbes, with the likes of Bloomberg, who are looking at the numbers behind it as well. So it's been really encouraging so far. What we're doing there's lots of events planned. So the main season is going to be happening just outside Dallas in Grand Prairie, Texas. There's also some games happening in Raleigh, North Carolina, as well. Um, and there's all sponsors. There's 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 sponsors. There's super sponsors. There's lots in place happening here. Um, the the jerseys and the uniforms all look really cool as well. So it's it's being targeted to the domestic uh, sports fan, but also um, uh, um, expats and and the populations from the Southeast Asian continent as well. Um, as, as I mentioned, cricket is the second biggest sport in the world behind soccer. It was, in fact, the biggest sport in the U.S. before the Civil War, which is a wonderful little statistic for you. Really? Wow. Uh, no. Yeah. This is C? Yeah. Wow. So we're, we're bringing it back. So, yeah, exa- um, there's lots of, uh, there's going to be some activations coming up. I can't say too much at this point, but um, yeah. hopefully it'll be coming onto your radar. Uh, there is a New York team as well. So um, you, you should be, uh, have the opportunity in the coming seasons to uh, to check it out in person as well. Yeah, Russell. And and how long will the game be in the US? Uh, the game, so, so they play a T20 format. So it's 20, okay. to each team plays 20 overs with an over is okay. six balls. So we're talking maybe about three, three and a half hours. So it's the fast paced version of cricket. Yep. It's the perfect. Uh, it's the kind of cricket that's taken off the IPL, the Indian Premier League is the biggest league in the world. Yep. And four of the six teams in Major League Cricket uh, have IPL backing, so there is a lot of um, infrastructure going into this, a lot of uh, a lot of money coming into this as well. 
Uh, and it, I think it's really set up for success because what's interesting too is um, cricket players can essentially play in several leagues simultaneously, if that makes sense, because a season will only last a set period of time, like a summer. or, or right. So the top players can play in three different countries right. in, in, a single, in a single year, if that makes sense. So um, that works to Major League Cricket's advantage because all the top stars are coming as well. So it's very exciting, wow. very exciting times ahead. Yeah. Well, there you go. We learn something new every time we have you on. <laughs> which uh, which fields are, are they using for, for cricket fields? Like, like are they repurposing like soccer fields? Baseball. Or? It's baseball fields, yeah. So the, the main stadium they're using in Texas is um, a repurposed baseball field. They just laid the turf down. It looks very impressive. Um, obviously, it's quite a big field. It's vaguely baseball sized. It's usually circular, um, a cricket field. So it yeah. um, requires a lot of space. But like uh, several of the teams have already uh, put down their investment to build their own stadiums, including... San Francisco as well, who we're looking after. Uh, and uh, as, as we, to, to bring it back to Red Knot and our, our core businesses, I think I, I imagine that um, sports betting is going to become a big part of it as well, particularly in different territory, particularly in the Southeast Asian continent and in Europe as well. So there's lots of potential for growth here for, for Major League Cricket. Yeah. Okay. Looking forward to that. <laughs> this is excellent. Me too. Yeah. yeah. This is our first conversation that we've had on cricket. There you go. <laughs> it's, a, it's a similar sort of pace of game to baseball. If you like baseball, I think broadly you would like cricket too, particularly in the T20 format where it's kind of exciting and there's lots of action. Lots of big hits, lots of balls going for six where they get six points where you try to hit it out of the stadium, basically. Excellent. All wrong. That's it. <laughs> That's the word I was looking for. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. Uh, all right. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, this was great. I uh, appreciate all, all the insight and you know, all the information about Red Knot and what you guys are up to these days. And you know, we'll try to get you on maybe in uh, six months or so when you've relocated to the States and maybe we can do the next one in person. I would love that. That's my pleasure. And uh, just to say thank you to you guys for doing day trial conversations. We really enjoy it. We know that um, our industry friends and our clients and our colleagues really enjoy it as well. So thank you for what you do as well. And uh, right. anyone out there wants to hear more about Red Knot, you can head to rednotcoms.com and check out our services, PR and media support within the sports and sports betting industries. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Thank you. We'll talk soon.